In module three, we are going to discuss MDX expressions. Well, part of this specific module, uh, you learn how to create calculated members by using MDX expressions, as well as how to view metadata and work with uh, conditional statements. So in the first section, I'd like to demonstrate how to create an expression with constants. And then, of course, we have some more talk regarding the expressions. And at the end, we are going to discuss operators that are available. So let's please pay attention to this demonstration. In this specific demonstration, I'd like you to pay attention to this specific uh, activity. And then you can follow with me after you saw the entire, uh, basically, demonstration in here. You learn how to use constants to create MDX expressions in a calculated member. Basically, constant expressions display the same value in all cells. So in order to do this, what I'd like to do, I'd like to go back in here and switch back to Analysis Manager. And in this specific procedure, I'd like to assign a numerical value constant to a calculated number. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to go to Basic uh, Sales in here, part of Market. Uh, under basic cells right in here, virtual cube. I'd like to go to the editor of it. That's the virtual dimension. I'm sorry, virtual cube. Uh, and here, part of the calculated members, I'd like to create a new calculated member. Or since this is a virtual cube, I can import an existing calculated member from the base cubes that are available. So what I'd like to do, create a new calculated member. And I'd like to call this a constant. Sometimes you like to create a constant value based on calculation. So I like to just put 500. Check it. Everything is good. And basically click OK. As you see, the constant value is 500 all the time because that's what we call it, the constant. So in the preview pane, as you see, also they call it the browser in here. Notice that the constant is appeared for all available levels. Even though I expand the specific product category, you see the constant is always the same value in here. So the constant is always a constant. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to go and display the subcategory of, for example, another product, like, for example, meat. Again, for that, the constant is available. So let's go and create a calculated number with a string value. I'd like to go and modify my constant value and basically just say, hello from apex so let's go check that since this is just a constant value but it's a string value again you get the same information so the constant could be a string or could be numerical that's the demonstration i wanted to show you just for now so you can use a text string as a constant value in a calculated member like for example you want to just do some a string manipulation as well in other words you could combine uh, the name and the value together if you will as a constant information. So now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to go back in here and modify my calculated member. And this time, uh, as far as the constant member, we'll, I'd like to go and type in null value. Null is a basically keyword. If I click null value, see what's going to happen. You get null. That means you don't get any information in there. So you could also have a null constant information. So these are the possibilities that you have within MDX. When to use it is totally up to you. When you first create a calculated member, you should assign null just in case you wanted to test to see if it applies for all available levels, and then you can go and modify it. That's the best way rather than wasting the time trying to put a value that might not work for the first time, and then you waste the time in order to go and figure out the rest of your design. So it's not a bad idea to just put the null temporarily in order to make sure that the browser works, the dimension works, just in case if you are going to create a non-measure calculated member also, that helps you, you know, to at least navigate without getting an error. After you created this, you could always go back in here and change the name. For example, here, what I'd like to go and do, I'd like to, for example, change the name from constant to expression. For example, here, the name has changed to expression, as you see. You could also change the name right from in here. You could change the name back to constant, for example. That also changes the browser information and the field value. Also, I'd like to go and create a very simple uh, numeric formula. So instead of a constant, I'd like to again change that to be expression. And I'd like to have a value 
of 50 plus, for example, 17. You see, that's a very simple expression that I have. 15 plus 17, 50 plus 17 will give me 67, as you see. And that would be my expression. So it will calculate it on the fly, as you see. Also, we can basically go and use any other operators that are available. Like, for example, we could go with addition, multiplication, uh, division, and uh, basically, uh, let's say, uh, subtraction. Now, after you saw this demonstration, let's go back and continue with our talk regarding this module. As you realize, uh, what I've demonstrated was this specific activity in order to show, uh, basically, uh, an expression that is available, part of uh, creation of a calculated member. You learn how to create a constant, numerical constants, expressions, as well as the uh, string constants. So let's go back in here and talk about expressions a little bit more. They are used to create calculated members. So basically, we can use expression in order to create calculated members. The function like a spreadsheet formulas, uh, it, it would be calculated for each cell of a browser grid. As you realize, I drilled down and drilled up. Automatically, the calculated members will be applicable for all of them. They are entered by using calculated member builder. As you saw, that's the way you are creating them. So in order to create an MDX expression, you have to use calculated member builder. Also, they are edited using calculated member builder or the value property. The value property also is available. And basically, by going and clicking on the ellipse button, you automatically get back the calculated member builder. You could rename it. I've demonstrated that for you. And it could be numeric, text, or a null value or empty value. These were operators that I've just demonstrated the addition, of course. You could just use any other uh, operator, as you've seen here. The string operator combines the string values by using using plus, min uh, plus for example. You cannot combine numeric and string values together. So you could concatenate two different strings values together. Like, for example, hello plus world. You know, it's two different strings in there. There is a lab in which allows you to go and basically practice in order to create an expression uh, from constants, which I'll give you some time later on to do that. But meanwhile, let's move on and continue with the rest of our talk. Now, I'd like to demonstrate how to display member information. Like, for example, you already have some dimensions. You would like to go and grab those members and show it or do some calculation on them. So, and then after that, I'm going to show you some of the available functions, some of the most popular functions that you will be using throughout the rest of this course. And then I'm introducing a very, very important function called current member. Means whichever the end user clicks on, the current existing member that the user is viewing, it will be referred back to you. It will be retrieved from the queue. And then, of course, we're going to go and discuss the name function, which you could get the name of that member, and also the level function, which allows you to search and navigate through the dimension itself. So please pay attention to this specific activity. What I'd like to do now, switch back to my analyzer here. And I am already part of the basic sales, as you see, virtual queue. What I'd like to do, I'd like to create a new calculated member in here and call this new calculated member, uh, for example, to be name. I just like to name it name. So in this specific function, uh, we can go and basically get a specific member name. Just for any information, if you recall, we talked about the functions grid right in here. Part of the function grid, we have a variety of different categories of available functions. So all MDX functions are listed in here, part of the functions grid. And basically, one, one thing we could do, we could go and get information about the string category. And as you see, there are more than one name function. You could choose in either level or hierarchy or dimension or even a member, get the name accordingly. So as you see, if I choose name dimension, you get the name of the dimension. If you go with the name of a hierarchy, you go get the name of the hierarchy. And you could expose the level name or a member name. For this a specific demonstration, I like to get a member name. So you could either get the name of a member by using the string function, name member, and specify the member name. Or you could also retrieve that information by going through the member. And as you see, the member category has more functions in here, one of which happens to get and expose the name for me. So in this scenario, the current member also refers the name as well. So what I'd like to do, as far as the member itself, this is the member. 
but let's go make it simple let's choose the name member double click on it and as you see this is a token this member token as you see refers to the member function it says which one of this function would you like to use in of this token if you don't know which function to choose you could basically expand this and choose any of the following the name of what member you would like to show in here you could basically go either get it from in here as far as the function goes or you could make it even simpler choose one of these dimensions in here for the sake of discussion I like to expand products category and bread so what I like to do I like to get instead of the member I like to get the product bread name let's go check that click OK remember that the maroon key or color specifies the keyword for the properties and functions in MDX Builder and the blank is referring to a, a specific name so if I click OK as you see the name basically refers to the name of that particular member and that will be applicable for all available you know levels and groups of course in this demonstration that doesn't make sense to go and show bread for all levels so instead of showing one particular basically uh, category name isn't it nice to show the appropriate name on the appropriate level by the time you're expanding it drilling it down or up you show appropriate name in front of it so in order to do that I'm going to use a member function and call current member rather so I like to get the current member name now here this one refers to a dimension well basically I'm going and choosing the product as my dimension in other words for the product members in any dimension I mean in any level of it you show exact same name so as you see this is just basically mirroring what you see part of the product category if I expand that as you see automatically shows dairy and then below cheese in front of cheese you see cheese milk and sour cream for example it shows the name of that current member by the time you're expanding it if you expand further down you see exactly and that name in front of it so now you understand how to get the current member name by using the member basically member current member function and pass a dimension to it so in this demonstration you saw how to get and display the current member name information now also you could you could change this technique and basically go with the level there are other functionalities for the level itself uh, you could also go on the string and as you see search for the level name rather than member name so if I click on that as you see it's looking for a level and basically for the level again you can expand it and choose a level or go under level function and specify what is it that you're looking for you're looking for the key or you're looking for a name it's totally up to you how you're looking for it so now if I go and choose for example instead of a level for the sake of discussion let's go with the uh, perhaps let me actually go back in here and choose my original naming convention let's go with level member name and then part of the member if I choose current member and part of the dimension uh, I like to go and double click on the product as you see this shows the original example but instead of the current member instead of showing the name of the current member I like sh to show the level name so all I need to do is just put the level in there or I could again go back in here and choose the name level and instead of the level I could actually go with the string and as you see on the dimension I could choose the product and this is the a string expression part of the string expression it shows what is it that you like to show in here for the string itself so part of the string expression I could either go with the current member for example that's another function that you have and basically get that or just use a very simple formula in here and type in current member dot level there are more than one way in order to achieve the same result so let's go and see this first so as you see it shows the level it shows exactly this product is part of what level you see this is like a subcategory this is category this is the product name so you could show the level instead I can go back and change this by showing the basically member I can choose the current member for example that level that name and here part of the dimension I should also change that to be product so again 
you could achieve the same result by using a different string value in here. So part of this demonstration, you saw that you could basically display the information about this particular member or display the information about the particular uh, level of that a specific member in there. So let's switch back here to our demonstration. What we have talked about so far, I have shown you how to display uh, member information. So what do we do? We use actually MDX functions. MDX function allowed you to go and basically choose from the categories. There were a variety of different categories. I showed you and demonstrated the string functions, some of the examples of it, member functions and numerical functions, obviously. And then there are some features available. You have the viewing syntax. It shows exactly what you should replace with. They show you a token in a red color, so you could replace that a specific token. You could double click and add value to the expression, and it will appear with token, as I mentioned. You could replace the token with something else. As you saw part of the demonstration, I introduced the very uh, famous uh, function part of MDX, they call it current member. And that will return the current member of a dimension, is a label and a row or a column, or a filter label. Is default function for a dimension, and of course appears in a member group of a function list. So if you go with the, like a dimension, that current member, that name, that will return the name of the current member of the product dimension in this example. We also demonstrated the name function which returned the name of that member as a string, had three versions. As you remembered, I showed you as a dimension or hierarchy, you could get the name of a dimension or a hierarchy, you could get the name of a level, or you could get just the name of a member. So appears in the string group of a function list again. In this scenario, you're getting the name of this particular level, like colony bagels. You also had level function, which I showed you, which was returning the level of a member often fo follows the current member function and can be followed by a name function, as I demonstrated for you. Appears in a level group of a function list. So as you see in here, in this example, we are returning the name of the level of the current existing member of the product, uh, for example, dimension. Now, let's see how to display family tree relatives. I'd like to demonstrate uh, how to display the relationship between a member with other members, for example. So let's pay attention to this demo, how to navigate throughout the family tree. Again, I'm within the basic sales. And what I'd like to do now, I'd like to create a new calculated member. And I call this, for example, to be family. Part of this particular family, I'd like to show the relationships. By clicking on one member, I'd like to show the relationship with others. So in this scenario, I'd like to choose member category. Part of the member category, what I'd like to do I'd like to actually get, uh, actually let's go through the string name and this time go with the member. And instead of the member, I'd like to choose that uh, basically from the uh, uh, member category. And as you see, there are a bunch of relationship functions like cousin, like first child, ancestors, and so forth. What I'd like to go with, I'd like to go with members token and Let's go and choose the parent for it. So there's a function associated with the parent. In other words, if I click on each member, I'd like to show the parent for that member. So if I double click instead of the, basically the member, as you see, it shows the parent. It still is looking for a member. And part of this specific member, it says, OK, I'd like to show the name of a parent of whom. I have to specify that. I have to say, OK, show me the name of the parent of current member, for example. You could do that. And based on what dimension? Well, you could go, for example, with the product. So as you see, this particular MDX expression, it shows the name of the parent of the current member of the product dimension. I didn't even have to remember that. I just double clicked on a right function on a right time. So if I check that, click OK, as you see in here, basically, it shows the family. In other words, the bread total is part of the all product. The cheese total is part of the dairy. As you see in here, it basically shows the name of the parent. As you see, these are all subcategories. But the parent for cheese, milk, sour cream, and yogurt is dairy products. The name of basically bread, dairy, and meat are basically categories. But the parent, their parents is all products. So as you see, that formula basically shows the name of the parent of the current member. If I expand it, 
as you realize it shows the name of the parent immediate parent you could of course go and change this family to be using a different function for example instead of this let's go ahead and modify this value expression this time I like to go with again a string and go this time with the name member and instead of the member I like to go and this time instead of using parent I like to go ahead and use like ancestor as you see there are two levels of ancestors you could either go with a particular level or could go with distance this is kind of cool distance shows you how many levels do you want to go up in order to get the ancestors rather than a specific level name that's good when you don't know the name of the level you could go with like number or index value so if I go with the ancestors level it basically gives me two different tokens to choose from well as you see the level version of the ancestor takes two arguments right so these two arguments refers to the level and the member the first argument must be a member so in this scenario what I like to choose I like to choose the current member part of the dimension of the product for example and I'm choosing the level for the level what I like to do this second argument is basically returns the ancestor of the member of the specified level so in this scenario what I like to do I like to go ahead and choose the category level you know by you choosing this particular uh, level in here so what I like to do I like to get the ancestor of this level for the current members name so that's the way we are building our expression so let's take a look at that so as you see in here basically it shows the ancestor of the particular level so you see right now I am only and only choosing basically the uh, products all products you see the category these are all categories that's the name but I'm choosing basically the level name of that particular value let's go back in here once again current member for the category only in other words we are not showing anything above that so category becomes the basis so that's why you don't see all products in here because that's the parent and that's the top ancestors that I'm looking at I'm looking at this below rather than this above so if I expand dairy product as you see the dairy shows you see it's not showing all products anymore if I go and expand milk for example you see again it shows the ancestor dairy product so no matter how deep you go how how much you go down you drill down and still you show the ancestor for that a specific level so in this demonstration I also showed you how to take advantage of that also you could display the name of an ancestor in a relative level as I discussed earlier if you don't want to go with a particular level you could basically change that with numerical expressions like distance like for example show me uh, two levels if I click OK as you see it shows nothing right now if I expand that it actually shows all product why because you have to be two level down so in the sour cream this is the first level and that's the second level but on the category itself you don't have two levels you have only one level all products is immediate parent you don't have an ancestor as two level above you but if I break it down as you see hamburger for example has two levels if I break the hamburger down as you see now it becomes meat because you're looking at two level above so if you don't have two level above it just doesn't show anything so in this demonstration you also saw that you could basically refer to an ancestor by either a distance or by a, a specific level name so now let's switch back in here to our discussion part of this chapter course 2093 let's review what we have talked about as you realize I showed you how to navigate within the family tree and if you recall for example for a dimension we had different levels and different members so we talked about the relationships in the previous chapter we talked about the parents siblings child basically cousins and so forth and I demonstrated some of the functionalities in MDX you had the parent function you had the ancestors function you could get it by a specific level you could go with the distance as you see so as you see ancestor up to three level is all a state for the Oregon that's one that's two and that's three so you have three different states I mean, I mean three different levels in order to get to Oregon that's why the ancestor up to three levels will give you all the state also the ancestor at the country level as you seen here will give you the USA 
that's the ancestor of the country level. So what we have talked about, we talked about the parent function, which returned the parent of a specified member, often followed by a current member function, and appeared in a member group. So we realized that you could go with the dimension current member dot parent dot name or dot level dot name. There are many many functions you could choose from. Also, I discussed ancestors function. Ancestor returned the ancestor of a member at a specified level, at a specified distance in a hierarchy. So is equivalent to the parent function with the distances of one, if you realize. So you could go ancestor product dot current member comma category as a level. That will return the string bread if the current member is colony bagels, for example. Or it could go with just the distance. So basically parent function is exactly equivalent of an ancestor with the level of one. That basically refers to the same exact value. Now let's talk about member properties. As I mentioned earlier, in order to create a virtual dimension, you need to have a you know, member property. Also, member properties are handy when you want to show additional information to your end users instead of creating a brand new dimension. So we assume that you already have member properties. Now let's see how do we work with properties function. Because there is a function called properties in order to get a specific member property. Because you might have more than one. So you have to refer to that specific property in order to retrieve the value within an MDX. And of course, sometimes you might want to get the value of that property. Because the values within the member properties are stored as a string. So you've got to get the value of it if you are dealing with numerical information. So please pay attention to this specific activity. And you learn how to work with member properties. So what I'd like to do now, again, I'd like to go and create a brand new calculated member. And this time, I'd like to uh, call it, for example, property. By the way, so far what I've been doing, I've been creating calculated members as a measure type. Later on, I'll show you how to create a non-measure calculated members, which will create a you know, calculated level for a dimension. So what I'd like to do now, uh, on the string groups, again, we have been dealing with this a lot, I'd like to go and deal with the properties function. And as you see, the properties function will basically ask for a member and a string expressions in here. So what I'd like to do for the member, I'd like to go with the members level, current member, and choose a dimension product. So, so far so good, I'm getting the properties for the current member of the product dimension. But which property? Well, basically, you should know the property for that. You have to know the name of the property. If you do not know it, you should stop up to this point. I'm just copying and pasting that. As you see, part of the product itself, you could basically, uh, let's actually go back in here, save my virtual queue, go back to the dimension itself, the product dimension. As you see in here, you might or might not have member properties. You see for a subcategory, I have the category manager. So in order to create a new member property, just as a review, all you have to do is choose a particular field name in there. So I already have a category manager. And then, of course, for the product name, I have a price property. So as you see, things that you are not using as a level or a member within the dimension, you might want to use it for member properties. So later on, you could use it as a virtual dimension, or perhaps you want to go, for example, with additional information. So you should be familiar with this name. You see, that's the category manager. If you do not refer to this name correctly, your calculated member won't work. Or at least refer to the a specific index of that member property. So let's go back in here. If you recall, I was going to create a new calculated member and I call it property. And if you recall, I created this particular expression. I like to get the properties for the current member of the product uh, information. So what I like to do, I like to put it within the quotation mark and I call it category. As you saw, I had category manager, didn't I? That was one of my properties, part of the current member of my product itself. I check that everything is good. If I click OK now, if I maximize this, as you see, the property will return an error. The reason that is an error because there is no property, member property for these levels. I have to expand it good enough and then you realize that some of them do have a name. So the rest of them that don't have any category manager, you see an error. So don't just judge the error as an error. You don't have a value. So you could basically later on and go and hide this error because it's not an error. You just don't have a value. 
I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but please pay attention once again that here all products, obviously, doesn't have a manager. Bread doesn't have a manager, right? If I expand the bread, well, basically, you're going to have a subcategory in order to have a manager. Like Sherry Norman, in that case, is a product manager for bagels, as well as muffins and slight bread. But for the category itself, you don't have any particular manager. So what I'd like to do for the property itself, which was showing an error, if we just didn't have the member property, I'd like to not show the error. What do, what do I do? Well, basically, there are some properties that you have to deal with. If I select the property in here, as you see, we got basically the parent dimension is major, and then that's the value for it. You can always get back to the calculated member by clicking on the ellipse button. What I'd like to do now, here I'd like to basically uh, go back in here, and as you see, there are more f properties available like font size, font name, background color, foreground color, and so forth. And what I'd like to do, I'd like to go and change my expression in a way that it wouldn't show the error in here. It wouldn't show the error if I don't have any value. Why don't I go back in here? And basically, instead of being on the current member, which might not have any value, I like to go a little bit deeper down and show the ancestor and see if there is an ancestor for it, then I show it. So what I like to do, let me just copy paste this property name, get rid of that. And what I like to do, I like to go with basically, again, a string and choose properties. And part of member, and instead of the uh, current member, I like to go and choose ancestor. And part of the ancestor, I like to choose the member to be product. And as far as the level, I like to choose subcategory because I know category doesn't have a member property. And if you forgot to do that, you could basically uh, see that. Let me actually go back in here. Let me switch back to the shared dimension in here, product, it's important for you to be familiar with the levels of your dimension. As you see, there is no member property. So there is no need for me to search for category. I do have it for subcategory, however. So, so you have to be familiar with the dimension before you really create a calculated member. Otherwise, uh, there is no really concept of a great design. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to go and choose the uh, properties, uh, and then instead of a member, I'd like to go and choose, for example, the ancestor level. And part of the member, I choose product. And on the level, since I know category doesn't have any, I choose subcategory. And then part of this expression, I choose basically the name of my property. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to get the name of the properties or the value of the properties in here for this level only of this product. So if I check it, OK it, and click OK it, in here, if I maximize this again, as you see, I don't have any value whatsoever unless I have an ancestor. So you could figure out exactly how to get rid of that error message by just choosing the right function. What I'd like to do also, I'd like to go and edit this property and instead of showing the manager name, I'd like to go and do some calculation. If you remember part of the uh, product dimension, I also had the price member property which was part of the product name. So what I like to do, I like to go and basically, again, choose the properties uh, function. And part of the member, I, I like to choose the current member because it just makes more sense to go with that for this demonstration. Choose the product. However, there is another one called price member property. Let's check that, click OK, and see what would have happened in here. So as you see, the property is like error again. Why? Because I don't have any, basically, pricing for the category or subcategory yet. I do have it for, for example, for some of these, you know, values. If you don't see any value, you might not have a price. You can actually expand them further and see what's going on. Some of them might, some of them might not have a value. It really depends on how you look at the data. At least you don't get an error that way. So in this scenario, since basically I'm looking for a particular property to be shown, what I like to do, I like to get the value, since it's a string, it might not show it, I like to get the value of that price. So if I check it, click OK, let's see what, what would have happened. 
again you don't have any value for some of these subcategories what I like to do let's go under not dairy not meat let's go on the bread and you might have some information in here let's go and choose basically bagels the sliced bread as you see this is there is no value for this whatsoever let's go back and switch this again so I get the value for the product current member properties price if I multiply this by 2 let's see what would have happened click OK again since the value was 0 even multiplication by 2 it would have really uh, caused no uh, specific information in here so what I'd like to do now I'd like to go and save this and perhaps go back here to my basic sales and try to process my data and let's go and browse this again browse the data and as you see all my calculated members are available in here so part of the properties if I do have any price property I will show it in here part of this particular browser as you see the pricing will show for some of the products so this is like the price for Booker for the price for like Carlson but the rest of them do not have the pricing at all so again the value I've multiplied by 2 and I show it in here you can always go back basically to the calculated member on the properties let me get rid of some of these like uh, delete family name uh, actually I just like to delete them because I like to just show what I'm looking for and on the property I can actually go and change the format the string to be like currency and as you see here if I expand this again some do have a value for me some don't actually let's go back to the bread and as you see they do have actual value in here so that's the property pricing for member member value member property price for some of these member names so now let's go back in here and see what we talked about and put them together as a review as you recall we talked about basically a family tree we talked about parent ancestor navigation and also here I showed you how to work with member properties so the properties function returned the member property you required the property name you had to know that place it within the quotation mark you would have gotten an error if the property name didn't exist and often used with ancestor function to get the correct level you could return the property value as a string even if it is a number by default you get a string anyways that's why you have to use the val function so val function converts a string to a number and it is useful for converting member property to a number it, it is a VBA function not an MDX function so you are familiar with that val function perhaps if you have been doing visual basic or automation programming in the past there is a second lab in which allows you to go and display the cube data and that lab basically allows you to go and practice with what we have talked about so I give you some time to do these two labs together so for the rest of this uh, specific chapter we are going to discuss how to work with conditional expressions in this section you learn how to create a conditional expression and then of course you might have multiple conditions we are going to discuss that as well and sometimes you are going to discuss uh, basically a particular condition based on that condition you want to take an action using the IF function so please pay attention to this demonstration in here what I like to do I like to go and basically get rid of whatever properties I have and create a brand new calculated member and in this scenario I like to go and basically call this conditional now part of this conditional is uh, a specific uh, member uh, calculated member I like to go and uh, use a particular uh, function called a string name so I like to get the name and basically go and search for a particular member the color current number and part of the dimension I can basically go and get a particular dimension name that way and I could check that to be equal to a, a particular value you see that's kind of a conditional statement that you could have in here so you could say if this condition is true you do something about it of course you can 
go and make it more uh, complicated you could use the ancestor choose the member and basically use the current member that way for the product dimension for for the sake of discussion and choose a particular level in this scenario I choose the category and get the name for the category and if it's equal to bread and we search for that particular category so if I go with that click OK as you see the conditional statement shows one if the value is true and shows zero if the value is not true so the end result will return a true or false value so just wanted to sh show you that and demonstrate that for you of course you could use a variety of different uh, operators such as equal to not equal to greater than less than and so forth so you could basically use any of them there's another function in here uh, part of the member uh, you could basically instead of a uh, current member of course use any other uh, functions such as ancestors uh, parent and so forth which we have already talked about also I like to use the a string and talk about if as you see the if allows you to go and uh, look for a specific string expression and based on that get a true or false value so what I like to do right now this is my condition ancestor the product current member and this a specific level I get the name if it's equal to bread I show one what I can do I can basically go and uh, just copy paste this because I would like to use it within the IF statement part of this first logical expression I place that that would be my logical expression and then I could basically show the string expression one if the value is true and the experience expression 2 if the value is not true so instead of showing 0 or 1 I can show something else in there so I can sh show for example bring and instead of a spring expression uh, 2 I could specify for example do not uh, let's say bring so let's say if I go click OK if the category is bread I said bring and if it's not I said don't bring so instead of having zero or one I can put anything else I can say doesn't exist or exist I could just accept zero or one so if allows you to go and basically check for a logical expression in there and if it's true you do something with it if it's not you do something else you could also go and deal with uh, basically numerical value what I like to do I like to modify this a little bit this is ancestor product current member uh, category bread I could actually copy paste this and combine it with another logical and uh, expression like for example I could go with cheese I could search for bread or cheese and either or will return a value back to me so I click OK in here so as you see it, in the case of bread or perhaps cheese you could see that you could basically go and find the value uh, probably I have misspelled a uh, few condition in here let's go back and make sure that I've done the right job I say if ancestor uh, product current member and then the level the actual category name is e equal to bread or basically ancestor product current member the product uh, subcategory actually is not the category that's the problem I have to go with the subcategory because the cheese is not the category is a subcategory if I click OK now as you see the value has become better because cheese is a subcategory not the category so I fixed that problem you could again go back and use the conditional operators such as or such as and x or and so forth so now what we have talked about in this demonstration we basically uh, discuss the conditional uh, expressions so using the conditional expressions you will get a return value as a true or false and of course you could use the comparison operators in order to get that the specific result set you could use the uh, operators in order to combine multiple conditions as I showed you using or and x or not and then of course here the result is a conditional expression as well so again you would have returned a true or false you could use the if function in order to show a string value instead of 0 and 1 so basically by going through this specific section you have another lamp in which allows you to use conditional expression and that will cover up this particular chapter we talked about using MDX expressions 
I showed you how to display member information using the current member, that name, how to display family tree relatives such as parent, ancestors, and so forth. We talked about member properties using the properties function, and we talked about conditional expressions such as, for example, or, such as, for example, if, and basically combining them together and getting the results set accordingly. So I give you some time to do lab C, which is using conditional expressions.